Hello KubeCon and Cloud Native Con. Welcome to my talk, MCK, it is a container orchestration platform for geo-distributed multi-cluster environments. My name is Mulu Guetta and I'm a PhD candidate at the Focur project at the University of Rennes in France and Cloud Native Engineer at Elasticis AB. So today I would like to talk about the evolution of cloud deployments in the past few years and some of the challenges in multi-cluster uh, management in terms of resource management and application deployment. And then I'll briefly discuss Kubernetes Federation, which is a foundation of our work. Uh, and then I will briefly discuss the architecture and controllers of our platform MCKTS and lastly show you a demonstration of our platform in action. So in the last few years, we have seen uh, an increasingly uh, geographically distributed cloud deployments. Uh, the major cloud providers now have data centers in many regions of the world. We can identify three main uh, geodistributed deployments, namely hybrid cloud, multi-cloud and fog computing in hybrid cloud. Uh, we deploy applications on data centers from private and public cloud uh, providers. Uh, in the multi-cloud case, we deploy applications on multiple public clouds or data centers from multiple regions of the same uh, public cloud provider. The last one for computing is an emerging geodistributed computing paradigm where we have resources from private, uh, public, as well as micro data centers that are distributed in vast geographical areas in the aims to be closer to end users. Much of this evolution is driven by the increasing demands of modern applications. Some of the non-functional requirements are low latency, the desire to provide fast services to end users by placing our applications in regions where most of our users are located. Uh, high bandwidth and reliable connectivity in the case of uh, IoT and uh, video analytics, for example, we like to <coughs> have high bandwidth and reliable connectivity so that we can upload a vast amount of uh, data to the uh, analytics uh, framework. We have other requirements also, such as high availability and disaster recovery, scalability, security, and compliance. So managing this geodistributed environment is not easy. There are a lot of challenges. We are talking in terms of hundreds and thousands of clusters, uh, which become almost impossible to manage manually. So we need to have automated ways of deploying applications and managing resources. This means solving many challenges, some of which are res resilience in terms of hardware and network failures, providing various placement uh, policies, automated placement policies, solving our scaling problems at uh, various levels and in various degrees in order to provide a persistent performance, uh, uh, even though our workload and user traffic changes all the time. We also have to solve user traffic routing and load balancing issues so that we can route user traffic from one cluster to another. So we believe, uh, we, we try to address these problems in MCKTS and we believe that state-of-the-art container orchestrators such as Kubernetes uh, serve as the basic foundation and building blocks uh, because of their portability, interoperability and uh, extensible nature. Uh, we are not the first ones to address these problems. For example, the Kubernetes uh, SIG multi-cluster group has been working on the Kubernetes Federation project for the last few years. This project provides control plane and concepts and abstractions necessary to manage multi-cluster Kubernetes. And uh, in the same spirit as Kubernetes, the architecture has a host cluster where the controllers are deployed and much of the decision takes place and member clusters where applications are deployed. Kubernetes Federation provides a manual placement policy where you can specify your desired clusters and the Kubernetes Federation controllers will deploy your uh, applications on those clusters. It also provides an automated uh, mechanism called replica scheduling preference, uh, which provides fully load balanced or weight based placement across uh, your clusters. But we believe that uh, in many of the geodistributed environments, such as for computing, you need more autom automated policies, such as resource-based policies in order to utilize the clusters fully or locality-aware and proximity-aware placement policies so that we can deploy our applications uh, on the clusters where most of our users uh, are uh, located. We would also need auto-scaling 
resource provisioning and network routing policies. So that's where our project MCK is, which stands for multi-cluster Kubernetes comes in. So our aim is to address some of the challenges we mentioned earlier with the goal to provide automated placement of loading and busting policies, as well as auto scaling at three levels. First at the multi-cluster or federation level, so that we our uh, platform can add or remove Kubernetes clusters to the federation based on the amount of workload or user traffic at the cluster level where uh, worker nodes are dynamically added or removed in response to changing workloads and at the level of pods or applications where the replicas of deployments are adjusted uh, in order uh, in accordance to the resource utilization. We also aim to provide inter-cluster network routing and load balancing. Um, the architecture is pretty much similar to that of Kubernetes Federation. In our case, we have a management cluster that has our controllers uh, as well as workload clusters where our applications are deployed. Uh, in MCK, it is, we rely on other open source uh, software uh, such as Kubernetes Federation, which we use for managing membership to the Federation, adding and removing of clusters to the Federation. We use Cluster API for transparent provisioning and removal of uh, uh, Kubernetes clusters on supported cloud providers. We use Prometheus for monitoring our workload clusters uh, for resource use and uh, network use. We also have Surf and Cilium on our workload cluster. Surf is used for measuring inter-cluster network latency, which we uh, rely on when making offloading and bursting decisions. Cilium is used for inter-cluster network crowding and load balancing. So on top of this, we introduced four new controllers, namely multi-cluster scheduler, multi-cluster horizontal polar scaler, rescheduler and cloud cluster provisioner and auto scaler. I will discuss the details of these controllers in the coming slides. So in MCK, this we have introduced some uh, six uh, custom resources. The first three are similar to that of Kubernetes Federation. So multi-cluster deployment is similar to federated deployment. Multi-cluster jobs is similar to federated jobs. Multi-cluster service is similar to a federated service, but we have also introduced multi-cluster horizontal port hour scaler, uh, cloud cluster provisioner and multi-cluster scheduler. So these are the resources that our controllers uh, deploy, <coughs> update and remove. On the right, you can see the custom resource definition for one of our resources, the multi-cluster deployments. Uh, it's a simple definition. The first controller is a multi-cluster scheduler. So this one is responsible for uh, creation, deletion, and updating of three of our custom resources, namely multi-cluster deployment, multi-cluster service, and multi-cluster jobs. We provide manual and uh, automated policy-based uh, placement capabilities. The first one is a manual cluster affinity capability where you can deploy your applications on selected clusters similar uh, to Kubernetes Federation. So you can specify, I want to deploy on this and this and this cluster, and then our scheduler takes care of that. We also have our automated resource-based and network traffic aware policies. For example, we have a worst fit policy that uh, deploys uh, applications on the clusters that have the most uh, resources available. We also have a best fit policy that uses a bin packing algorithm to uh, deploy applications on those clusters that have been used the most. We have a traffic aware policy, which is which comes in handy in the case of for computing uh, <clears throat> that deploys applications on those clusters that have uh, that are receiving the most traffic. So network traffic is uh, used here as an indicator for the for the presence of most most users. Our scheduler also provides horizontal offloading capability to uh, neighboring clusters. Uh, this, uh, uh, what this means is if your selected clusters do not have sufficient resources for deploying your applications, our scheduler will deploy or offload the application to another cluster that have sufficient resources, but is closer to the selected clusters in terms of network latency. We also provide bursting capability where uh, if a cluster cannot place all the replicas of uh, a deployment, the extra replicas are deployed on neighboring clusters that have the sufficient resources. On the right side, we can see the manifest file for a sample multi-cluster deployment. So as you can see, this manifest file is pretty much similar to that of uh, vanilla Kubernetes deployment. The only difference is the API version kind and certain uh, certain fields under the spec uh, section. For example, here we have specified on the number of clusters or locations where we want our application deployed and the placement policy. 
Our multi-cluster service uh, works uh, in uh, collaboration with Cilium uh, to provide inter-cluster routing and load balancing. The service manifest is pretty much similar to that of uh, Kubernetes service uh, and uh, we add the annotation for Cilium uh, so that uh, <coughs> Cilium can do the inter-cluster network routing and load balancing. For us, this for this we need to have Cilium and Cilium cluster mesh on the workload clusters. The multi-cluster horizontal pod auto-scaler also similar to Kubernetes uh, uh, horizontal pod auto-scaler uh, adjust the number of replicas of our deployments across all uh, clusters, uh, and uh, this decision is passed to the scheduler, which makes uh, which adjusts the, the deployment or placement of our uh, replicas. So for example, if uh, initially we have we had a few replicas and then the, our autoscaler decides that more replicas are required and our cluster cannot uh, place all those replicas, our scheduler can burst the extra replicas to other clusters. The cloud cluster provisioner and autoscaler uh, periodically checks the status of our multi-cluster deployments uh, and uh, transparently provisions a Kubernetes cluster on a supported cloud pro provisioner via cluster API and then joins this cluster to the federation, the scales the number of worker nodes as necessary, and finally removes the cloud cluster if it is not needed anymore after a certain amount of time. The manifest file is shown at the right. Here we have to specify the credentials for our cloud provider and additional information such as the IP of the load balancer and so on. The implementation of MCKTS was done on using COPF, which is uh, Kubernetes Operators Framework from Zalando, based on uh, Python. Now let's go to a short demonstration of MCKTS in action. In this demo, we have one management cluster and five workload uh, clusters in the Grid 5000 experimentation. Test paid, we have a management cluster in Rennes and uh, five worker workload clusters in Rennes, Nantes, Lille, Luxembourg, and Grenoble. We also have an OpenStack cluster in Nancy, which acts as the cloud uh, cluster on which we will transparently provision a Kubernetes cluster when necessary. Each of uh, our five clusters have a master node and five worker nodes for the sake of heterogeneity. Uh, clusters 1 and 5, their nodes have 4 CPU cores and 16 GB of RAM each, and the nodes of clusters 2, 3, and 4 have 2 CPU and 4 GB of RAM each. Uh, the table shows the inter-cluster network latency between these clusters. Uh, the prerequisites for, for this demo are a management cluster and a few workload clusters as shown here. We also need Kubernetes Federation Prometheus cluster API on our management cluster, and our workload clusters need to have Cilium and Cilium cluster mesh serve as well as Prometheus. We also need the credentials for a cloud provider. In our case, we have used OpenStack, but for that matter, we can use other cloud providers such as AWS, uh, Google Cloud, and so on. And if uh, we'd like to have internet or inter cluster network latency and load balancing, we need uh, physical or virtual networks such as a VPN across our clusters. So now let's go to the demo. In this demo, I'll show how to deploy the custom resources and controllers of MCKTS and how to use it to deploy some sample applications across multiple clusters. First, let's check the prerequisites. The first one is Kubernetes Federation. So to check that, I will run the command kube cuddle get kube fed clusters in the kube federation system namespace on the management cluster. And we see that we have five uh, clusters that form the federation. Next, let's check the status of uh, Cilium cluster mesh. Uh, to do this, I will face my kubectl command into one of the clusters, cluster one in this case, and first check the presence of the Cilium pods. So as we can see here, we have Cilium pods running. So now I'll go into one of these pods and run the command Cilium node list and we see that the Cilium uh, cluster mesh has been formed. Next I'll check uh, the presence of the cluster API resources. To check this I'll simply run the command uh, kubectl get namespaces on the management cluster and we see a few namespaces that contain the resources for cluster API. Uh, we will use cluster API to provision a cloud cluster from OpenStack in this case 
but uh, we can use different uh, providers for that matter. So let's check the presence of the OpenStack uh, cluster. So I'll run the command OpenStack uh, catalog list. And I see the details of my OpenStack clusters, but we can see that we don't have any servers at the moment. Next, I'll check Surf. So Surf is used for estimating the inter-cluster latency between the clusters, and this is important for offloading from one cluster, uh, offloading deployments from one cluster to to another. So Surf members. And I'll face one of the agents. So this should be RPC. And we see that there's a surf cluster as well. So now it's time to deploy our custom resources. We have, uh, in this demo, we will deploy four custom resources, which are multi-cluster deployment, multi-cluster service, multi-cluster jobs, and cloud provisioner and autoscaler. <coughs> so these are the custom resources that our multi-cluster scheduler and cloud provisioners use later on. So first I will deploy the first three custom resources. So CRD, multi-cluster deployment, multi-cluster service, and multi-cluster jobs. Great, they are created. Uh, next, I'll deploy uh, our uh, multi-cluster scheduler controller. So this is deployed as uh, a normal Kubernetes deployment, as we can see in the specification file here. Uh, we would like to deploy this on the uh, master node of the management cluster. So for that reason, we specify a node selector and the necessary tolerations. Uh, we, we would also need a service uh, account and uh, the uh, necessary role-based access control uh, so that this uh, controller has the necessary privileges to do its functions. So we uh, deploy the RBAC and the deployment. So let's check whether the this part, this deployment is created. So it's uh, being created right now. Uh, now let's go to uh, deploy the custom resource and for cloud the cloud provisioner. So the custom resource definition is a very simple one, as you as we can see here. And similarly, we also have the deployment for uh, the controller of cloud provisioner, similar to the previous one, so we deploy these two as well. Great, so let's check now whether the parts are running. So the multi-cluster scheduler is running, and the part for the cloud provisioner is being created as we speak. So it looks great now. So what we can do now is we can deploy uh, multi-cluster uh, applications. Uh, so I'll show uh, three scenarios. So the first scenario is I will try to use our multi-cluster scheduler to deploy uh, applications on a specific cluster. And then I'll show the horizontal offloading uh, cap capability. Uh, what this means is if the uh, we don't have sufficient resources in one cluster, our uh, scheduler is able to uh, offload the uh, applications to a nearby cluster by estimating the uh, network latency. And third, I'll show the bursting uh, capability. So what this means is uh, if a cluster cannot, uh, cannot place all the replicas of a deployment, we will, our scheduler will deploy the extra replicas to a nearby cluster. And then I'll also show bursting into the cloud. So if our fixed clusters do not have sufficient resources, our cloud provisioner will create a cloud uh, cluster on OpenStack, and our deployments will be uh, burst to, to, to that cluster. So let's check the... Uh, so one thing, uh, first we have to create a cloud uh, provisioner. So we have uh, the manifest file here that contains the 
uh, necessary information about the cloud cluster, in this case, OpenStack, the credentials and other important uh, information such as the IP address for the load balancer and so on. So we create uh, this cloud provisioner. <coughs> All right, this is created great. So now let's uh, deploy uh, our first application. So this is a simple uh, application that prints just hello. So we would like to deploy this application on one of our clusters, in this case, cluster two. Uh, and as if you notice, the manifest file for a multi-cluster deployment is very much similar to that of a normal Kubernetes deployment. The only difference is the API version and kind, and there are a few additional uh, fields under the spec section. In this case, we if we want to deploy uh, a multi-cluster deployment on specific clusters, we can specify the name of clusters comma separated uh, following the locations field. So <clears throat> now let's deploy this. So this will create five replicas on clusters two. So we have created um, a multi-cluster deployment named hello. So let's check whether this uh, resource has been created. So we see that it's created and let's check its status. So as we can see on the status, the multi-cluster deployment is created on cluster two and with five replicas. Let's go to, let's uh, go through all the clusters and check the pods that are running on those clusters. So I will create a for loop. So as we as you can see here, we have five replicas running on cluster two. So our scheduler is able to deploy on a specific cluster. So now let's uh, look at the offloading ca capability. So let's edit the manifest file for this deployment. So cluster two, uh, so for some reason, if we want to increase the resource request for, for, our, for our parts, in this case, uh, let's increase it to three cores. Uh, we know that the cluster two does not have uh, nodes uh, that have uh, three cores. So our scheduler will try to find another cluster that has uh, three or more cores and we'll try to deploy uh, this, uh, this deployment. So let's verify that. So I will apply the changes. So now let's check the status of our uh, multi-cluster deployment resource. And as you can see here on the update section of the status, we now see that the deployment is now running on cluster one and not cluster two, and we have five replicas running. So let's verify this. So as you can see, the deployments, the parts are now running on cluster one. So the reason is that cluster two does not have a sufficient resources. So our multi-cluster scheduler now has now deployed uh, this deployment on the nearest cluster two clusters, the, the original cluster two, which is cluster one. Next, I'll show the bursting capability. <clears throat> so again, let's edit the manifest file. This time, let's increase the number of replicas from five to 10. And uh, since cluster two only has five nodes, uh, it cannot uh, place all these 10 replicas of the application. So our scheduler will try to deploy the extra five replicas on another cluster that has the sufficient resources and is also uh, closer to cluster two in terms of network latency. So let's apply the changes and let's check the status of our multi-cluster deployment now. So in the update section so we should see yeah we should see that now the deployment is running on two clusters cluster one and cluster five so an, an additional cluster five uh, and the extra five replicas have been uh, deployed on cluster five so let's check let's verify so as you can see 
we have 10 replicas running uh, on two clusters, five on, on each cluster. <coughs> so this is great. Uh, what if we want to increase the number of replicas uh, once more? So let's make it 15. And let's see uh, what, what happens now. So what happens now is we don't have uh, sufficient resources on our five fixed clusters. So uh, when the schedule, our multi-cluster scheduler cannot uh, uh, deploy all these replicas, it will uh, update the status of the multi-cluster deployment uh, with uh, a message saying that it cannot deploy it and it needs to provision a cloud uh, a cloud cluster. So that's where our cloud provisioner controller comes in. So it will check the status of the multi-cluster deployment and it will create a new Kubernetes cluster on OpenStack, joins it to the uh, Kubernetes Federation. And then once the new cluster is ready, our multi-cluster scheduler will deploy the extra replicas on that uh, new cluster. So let's apply this change. And let's check the status of our multi-cluster deployment. So as you can see here, there is a a status up, uh, update. So there's this message that says the application could not be deployed on the fixed clusters and we need to provision a cloud a cloud cluster and there's this message to, to cloud. So now our cloud provisioner will create the Kubernetes cluster on OpenStack. So let's go to OpenStack and check if uh, the machines have been created. So now uh, first, the uh, master node for our new cluster is created. So uh, it would take a couple of minutes until uh, the cluster is uh, up and running fully. Let's check once again whether the cloud cluster has been created. So OpenStack server list. So we see that one master node and three worker nodes have been created. Let's check the status of the federation. So we see now there's a new addition to our Kubernetes Federation named Cloud1. So this is a cloud Kubernetes cluster that has just been created by our uh, cloud provisioner. Now let's check the status of our multi-cluster deployment, hello. And as you can see on the status, the deployment is now deployed on three clusters, cluster one, cluster five, and cloud one. So, so we see that our cloud uh, provisioner has indeed uh, created a cloud cluster and joined it to the federation when uh, our scheduler realized that it did not have sufficient resources on the fixed clusters to place our our deployments. Our cloud provisioner can also auto-scale the worker nodes of the cloud clusters and even remove the cloud cluster when uh, the workload has decreased and that uh, Cloud cluster is not needed anymore after a certain amount of time. Next, I'll show uh, the automated placement capability of our multi-cluster scheduler. For this, I have another uh, deployment. So this time we'll use the best fit placement uh, policy. So the best fit placement policy tries to deploy uh, applications on those clusters that have been used the most. So this is uh, a bin packing algorithm. So it tries to ut utilize resources as much as possible. So in this case, we are trying to deploy on two clusters that have uh, been used the most. So, and <coughs> let's try to deploy this. So I can see the best fit. And let's check the status of our multi-cluster deployment. So as you can see, the deployment has been uh, deployed on clusters one and five. Uh, these are the clusters among all our clusters uh, that have been used the most and let's, let's verify. So we can see that the parts have been, have been created on clusters one and five. Another placement policy is the worst fit uh, policy. So what this does is it will try to deploy uh, applications on the clusters that, that, that have the most uh, free resources available. Similarly, in this case, we would like to deploy on two clusters using the worst fit uh, policy. So let's try this. And let's check the status. So 
So this time the deployments have been created on clusters two and three. This is because these are the clusters that have the that have the most resources available. <coughs> and let's verify once more. So as you can see, the worst fit, the deployments using the worst fit policy have been created on clusters two and three. So the last thing I want to show you is how to deploy the multi-cluster service controllers and how we can uh, and how, how we can access the backend, the first backend application using a front end. So for this, we first need to create a multi-cluster service corresponding to our multi-cluster deployment named Hello. So this, uh, in this case, we don't have to specify the clusters because our scheduler will find the corresponding multi-cluster deployments named Hello, and it will create the corresponding Kubernetes services on all the clusters that have uh, the deployment. So let's apply this. And let's verify whether these services have been created. So as you can see, the Hello service have, have been created on clusters one and five. We can also check on the cloud the cluster whether the service have been created. So it's created. Now we need a front-end deployment and service to access the application. So we have a front-end multi-cluster deployment that we, we need to deploy this front-end uh, at least on one of the clusters that contain our backend multi-cluster deployment. So in this case, we'll try to deploy this on cluster one. Let's, and there's also a corresponding front-end service <coughs> that we will deploy on cluster one as well. So let's uh, deploy these two. And uh, let's check the status. So the front end uh, service have been created on cluster one. Let's check the part. Uh, the front end, uh, uh, front end uh, deployment uh, have been created on clusters one and two. This is because we have specified five replicas, and since our scheduler could not deploy all the five replicas on cluster one, it has created only three of the replicas and has. I burst the extra two cl two replicas to cluster two. So this is okay. Now let's try to access the applications front end using the IP address of the master node of cluster one and the node port. So as you can see, our application has uh, responded with the message hello. So uh, in this demo, I have shown you how you can deploy the custom resources and controllers of MC KTS and how using these controllers, you can deploy multi-cluster applications and services. I hope you have enjoyed this demo. And if you'd like to see more demos, you can take a look at our GitHub repository. Thank you. To conclude, if you are interested in learning more about this project and contribute, uh, please uh, visit our project's website at forguru.eu. You can also read our paper, which was accepted at the CERTIUS International Conference on Computer Communications and Networks. The link is shown here. You may also take a look at our source code uh, on GitHub and look at more examples as well. Thank you very much.